Welcome to our lecture online. So let's start with an easy example to try and figure out how to determine the length of a polar curve. The easy example, r equals sine of theta, which is simply a circle from the origin to the point on the y-axis equal to 1. So in other words, the radius of the circle is equal to 1 half. So remember that the function of theta is defined as r. So in this case, since r is equal to the sine of theta, we can write that the function of theta equals the sine of theta. Now, going back to the general equation to find the length of a polar curve, it's equal to the integral from a to b of the square root of the function of t squared plus the derivative of the function of t squared times dt. So we already have the function of theta, or in this case, well, let's see here. Let's use theta instead of t to, so that we don't have it too confusing. We can use any parametric variable, or in this case, since we're dealing with polar equations, we'll just go, go ahead and call it theta. And so all we have to do now is find the derivative of that, plug it in there, and do the integration. So the derivative of the sine, well, that's the cosine of theta. So now we go ahead and plug those in here. So we know that the length is equal to the integral. We'll worry about the limits later, times the square root of the function squared. So therefore, we have the sine square of theta plus the derivative of the function squared, which is the cosine square of theta, times d theta. And of course, we should change this to a theta as well. All right, what about the limits? Well, we want to go all the way around the circle. And notice we start at zero degrees. By the time we get to 90 degrees, we have a half a circle. And by the time we get to 180 degrees, we have a full circle. So we're only have to, we only have to integrate from zero to pi instead of from zero to two pi. So the limits of integration is going to go from zero to pi. And of course, we know that the sine squared theta plus the cosine squared theta is equal to one. The square root of one is equal to one. So we have L is equal to the integral from zero to pi of 1 times d theta, which is equal to, when we integrate d theta, we get theta from 0 to pi. And plug in the lower limit, we get 0. Plug in the upper limit, we get L is equal to pi. In other words, the circumference of that circle is equal to pi. Now you say, well, wait a minute. Isn't the circumference of a circle equal to 2 pi r? And the answer is yes. We know the circumference of a circle is equal to 2 pi times the radius r, but in this case, we know that the radius is equal to one half for that particular circle. Well, I gotta be careful. I can't use a small r for that because the small r is a function of theta. The radius of the circle, if I go from the middle of the circle to the edge here, let's call that big R. Let's make this into a big R so we don't confuse the two. And yes, the radius in this case for this circle is equal to one half. So 2 times pi times 1 half is indeed equal to pi. So the circumference of that particular circle, where it's defined by r equals sine of theta, is indeed equal to pi. And therefore, the length that we found matches what we would expect to see. And that's how it's done.